Uh, we're excited to get this conference started. We figured this be kind of just a small meeting to give you guys an idea uh, about uh, verbally about why we're doing this. We know we've already published a website and we have the information on there. So we encourage you to keep on watching that. Uh, if you have questions throughout this, I think Sergeant mentioned, but uh, please go ahead and uh, text them in the chat. At the end of the meeting, um, Lisa and Daryl will give us the, the questions and one of us uh, will go ahead and, and answer them. My name is Brian Bowler and, and this is Louis Nagel and, the, and this is Kyle Walter. And we're the, we're the crazy people who decided to do this stuff. <laughs> so um, we got together uh, just real briefly. We, um, we were thinking about, uh, well, it kind of started with a couple of us together. We we're up at the Chalice Conference and, and also with uh, Missy Campbell's on here. This last summer, we met with them and they really felt strongly to have a, a conference, but we didn't quite know how to proceed. So we waited. Then after the Chalice Conference, uh, Kyle came up to me and, and I was uh, just loving the spirit of, of being able to gather together again. And, and with all the, the things that have been happening in, in this year, I uh, felt it was important that we have more opportunities and conferences. And so that kind of made me get excited about doing this. And, and then on the way back from Chalice, uh, many of these ideas came and I got to talk to Lewis and, and it kind of just took off from there. We're, uh, uh, what we're gonna do today is go over, there's various, uh, various parts of the conference because there's a location that we're going to have next spring. Uh, it's around Mes Mesquite currently we're looking at and then uh, we'll get into further details uh, later about that. Uh, and then there's also going to be a, an ongoing conference starting today and uh, every week there's going to be online videos and we're going to explain later why we're doing that and and what we hope to accomplish. Uh, part of we're also addressing trying to address the youth activities and Missy Campbell's going to uh, talk a little bit later about that and, and we're lucky to have also uh, Peter Brown's uh, has a lot of experience with um, with uh, camps Boy Scout camps and, and coordinating so he's going to help out with the camp situation uh, so we're going to go ahead and start uh, with Kyle Kyle uh, we've had a post right before this conference started uh, uh, from Denver about the, how important process is. And so Kyle's gonna talk about that, why we are choosing to do the things the way we are. Kyle? Okay, just as uh, we, as Brian had mentioned, we had talked a little bit about this and that I got thinking about some of the things that uh, I felt were important, uh, mainly because of one of the latest posts that uh, Denver had done and stated that it was more uh, important to focus on the process than the end result. And so I've got a couple of things that I, I looked up. It'll only take about, you know, four or five minutes maybe just to go over them and kind of set the idea as to what we are hoping to learn and to gain through this process of doing the conference a little bit differently. But so as you think about the conference uh, in general, all of us are seeking for a true journey into the wilderness and hopefully that someday it would end in the promised land and a new temple and the priesthood and a city of God. However, those things are something that takes uh, a while to attain and we have to think about the process to get there. It's the same process that would have led Adam and Moses and Elijah and Jesus and Nephi and the children of Israel and many others that uh, sojourned in the wilderness. And we wonder and ponder upon that faith that they had in their religion and what it was that inspired Abraham to leave his home and journey into the land of promise by God. So as we thought about that, there was that recent post that Denver did that, that really hit me hard when he said that the process was more important than the end result. So I'd just like to read a couple of those things that uh, were said. Uh, we were recently instructed by Denver regarding the importance of focusing on process instead of just looking at the results. And then skipping down on that same post a little bit uh, Further down, he says that the Lord foretold the challenges his followers would face 
challenges would come first from false Christ, meaning that those who claimed that they were anointed by God to lead others when God had not sent them. Next, he warned of the violence and wars and that nature would also fight against mankind with earthquakes and famines and pestilence and religion, uh, religious persecutions would also be in, inevitable. But he said, through it all, the Lord advised patience and in your patience possess your, possesses your souls. This advice uh, to be patient in order to possess your souls was repeated in 1833, and it cannot be forced or demanded. And so when you think about that, we, we want to focus on the recent res revelations that have given us the great advantage in this quest to seek Zion. But right now, it appears that we are all more focused on results that we hope to obtain while ignoring the process is what he says. And then he said, goes on to say, uh, if I understand the Lord's answer to us in TNC section 157, he is almost entirely focused on the process and wants us to forget about the results. And that really hit me a lot because we, we want to obtain the end result, which is good, but it's the process that gets us there. So um, the results will only follow once we have figured out how to treat one another. The results are a byproduct product of getting the process right. The results are not something to be obtained using the wrong process. So then he said, if the process is wrong, the results are impossible. So think about that. If the process is wrong, the results are impossible. So we would be fighting and, and praying and trying and learning. But if we get the process wrong, then the results are still not going to happen. So, but if the process is right, the results are inevitable. So to me, that really hit home as, as kind of a, a theme that we needed to embrace over this next six months to be able to make this uh, conference uh, meaningful so that when we actually are in the wilderness and considering these things that uh, we think about the process that we just went through over the past six months in learning and growing and so seeking to understand what the Lord would have us learn. You know, those things uh, that have been said, what ought we to have learned? So hopefully through this process, we can learn some of those things. So then uh, when the ideal Zion was revealed in Joseph Smith's day, the people wanted it, they rushed to occupy it, but utterly failed to prepare to live in peace. So when we think about that, we want to do what we know that we need to, to prepare. And just in, in kind of wrapping up my thoughts about that, the process again matters more than the results. If the process is wrong, the results are impossible. But if the process is right, the results are inevitable. So, you know, the promises to the fathers will be fulfilled. We know that that's going to happen. So then when you go back and look at the processes that have been uh, discussed in the past and some of the posts, when you go in and search for that, I went in and researched a lot of things on process. There's quite a few things that all revert back to the process. So I would encourage everyone to uh, search that up a bit on the process and focus on that rather than hoping for the end result. So that was kind of my thoughts about all that. And that's my two bits worth and that's about it. Yeah, so one of the things we, we talked about was that uh, we just wanted to involve everybody that was out there. There's, there's a lot of people that haven't been able to plan a conference or be a part of and and so we spread, cast a, a, a big net out there. And, and luckily we've got a lot of people from various places from the East Coast to the West Coast. And, and, and we feel this is, it's important as, as part of knitting our hearts together that we, we have opportunities to see each other, to interact with each other. And, and that's kind of what led to the uh, idea of the online meetings. Uh, let me, uh, give my wife a heads up. I'm going to have Lewis go next. 
and internet connections. And uh, I'll have Lewis go next, and then I'll go ahead and um, and then my wife will be going after that. So Jennifer. <laughs> so. <laughs> All right, Lewis, go ahead. <laughs> um, okay, I'm supposed to speak on the location. <clears throat> I can do it really quickly. <laughs> Last spring or the spring of 2020, some folks tried to do one in Southern Utah and it of course got shut down. We didn't want that to happen again. So we wanted to have a place with plenty of room, uh, ideally in a warm place, which would be a confluence of five deserts down here around the St. George Mesquite area. And so, and we like to get together for extended periods of time and get to know each other. So. We thought a camp, a camp out, or at least a place out in a private, um, a wide open area would be ideal. So that's it. All right. Thanks, Louis. And and so then it led to a Passover. You know, it's like as we we're considering the dates, we looked at the Passover, and and uh, I'll go ahead and uh, pass it on to my wife in just a sec. But part of my feeling was it was that with the coming. Uh, as, as I look forward and we were looking at this uh, over the next six, seven months, um, we just felt like it would be important to, uh, the Passover jumped out and, and particularly not, not just the, pa the, the, the past Passover, but uh, the coming one that was qu quoted in, in, in the covenant. Anyway, so I want to go ahead and turn the time over to my wife, Jennifer, go ahead, <laughs> sweetie. Unmute. Okay, can everybody hear me? Okay, um, I'm pretty excited about the Passover because it is dear to my heart. I believe that the Passover is not just something very ancient from the Old Testament that happened in the time of Moses. I think it is something revel relevant to the past, present, and the future. Not only was it mentioned in the covenant, but it's also mentioned in many of the prophecies for the last days as we study the story of Moses and how the angel of death passed over the children of Israel, that is a promise we can also claim, but it will be different for us. It won't be a literal um, marking of a blood of a lamb on our doorpost and our lentils. It will be the lamb of God, Jesus Christ, who puts a mark upon our hearts. And I think one of the ways we can gain this mark upon our hearts is to understand what Jesus was doing when he took the last supper and he gave us the first sacrament. And one of the best ways to understand that is to have an experience with the last supper. I think that if we take the time to have a Passover experience with this conference in any way, shape or form, it really needs to be a Christ-centered last supper experience. Because as we understand what Christ was teaching us during his last supper with his apostles, then we can better understand the sacrament. And the sacrament has been one of the great gifts that we have received as a people. One of the things that has differentiated us from the Mormon church and one of the things that can bring us to Christ. So I'm really excited to have a Passover because it can add a depth and meaning to our sacrament. And because Christ said, in the New Testament, with desire, I have desired to have this Passover with you. I think that those words were definitely said to the apostles at the time, but I think they ring through the ages to each of us. He desires to have that with us because as he has an experience of giving us a sacramental moment, we can come to him and practice meeting him will help us make it easier for It'll, it'll be a rehearsal, a rehearsal for when we get to meet our Lord and Savior face to face. So I am really excited with whatever the conference planning committee decides to do with the Passover. I would really hope that we can sit down and break bread together and lift the covenant cup and we can have like a, a full meal as part of the Passover. Um, when we had a conference here in Cedar Edge, that wasn't feasible. And so I ended up just giving a talk about the Passover. And I'm really grateful for that. That was a wonderful experience. But I think that experiential learning is the best type of learning. And that's how Christ taught his people through the scriptures. And I think that's how he wants to teach us. So I hope that we can, I know it's a lot of work to put on a meal together, but I hope we can literally break bread together and partake of a Passover together as part of this conference. 
Are there any thoughts or questions or feedback on the idea of having a Passover as part of this conference? Cool. Thank it's you, wonderful. <laughs> Thanks, Eric. Um, I, I love what you said uh, about the experiential learning because that was one of the, the core ideas that we had um, with uh, with putting the whole conference together is like gathering together out out in the desert, maybe in the wilderness. We don't know yet. We're still <laughs> trying to figure out that location, but but there's so much to be gained by being together and experiencing, uh, talking, having the Passover, doing other activities uh, that that can knit again knit our hearts together. Uh, we are hoping to plan on at least one Passover meal, so. And uh, we just haven't quite worked the details out. We're kind of waiting for the location to work itself out. And we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. So we'll go ahead and uh, okay. that is McKay's. Well, just on. one minute. Um, Brett asked the question about, just one minute. Can go I ahead. say something? Brett just asked ask a question about the Passover book. So I put together a Christ-centered Passover a book and it's a pdf that anyone can download for free but i also published it on amazon so it could be a haggadah which is a book that you hold at the table during the passover to make it easier to share the passover um, i am currently um, updating it and making a new and better edition there were some typos in the first one and also i really wanted to add some of the story of how the early christians during um, after Christ left, how they stopped doing the Passover. It was mostly because of persecution from one of the early popes, Pope Victor, in 199 AD. He started excommunicating any Christian who practiced the Passover. And he did it because he had written an Easter liturgy and he thought it took away from Easter morning to practice the Passover. But I would like to tell some of that story because I think that the Passover was dear to the heart of the early Christians back before the religion was defiled by the passage of time. And I want to tell some of that story. So I'll put that story in the book and get it back up on Amazon. I hope to have it up um, by Thanksgiving or so. And uh, I will also put out a PDF and put it on every remnant site I know so that anyone who wants it can download it for free and have access to, to read about how a christ center Passover can be for their family. Hmm. Thanks, sweetheart. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because the other thought of the Passover is um, I like the story in, in Alma, uh, actually in Mosiah, and uh, Alma the Elder was uh, kind of like Denver, re received a messenger, Abinadi, uh, realized kind of the error of it, the traditions of the fathers, uh, started, they went to the waters of Mormon, got rebaptized, and then as they tried to get out of that land, they were captured and were put into bondage. And, and I see that kind of similar pattern that we're, we're going through these trials of these latter days. And, and, and so uh, the, what happened to Alman is people eventually they got to the point where only they were convinced that only through God could they be delivered. And, and that's what I, I think the process of what we're all going through in 2020 and, and beyond. Uh, will will convince us that only our our heavenly Father and, and Savior will be the ones, the Messiah, that is able to uh, save us from this and and redeem us, and and that's why the past, present, and future, and the, the Passover is just me and my wife. It's dear to our hearts just because it uh, has a lot of personal meaning uh, too, and I'm grateful for it. Uh, so we'll, we'll go ahead and now. I don't see McKay here, but I'm going to. Uh, Daryl, or I think you were going to share some about the online meeting. Yeah, so I'll go ahead and, and, and start talking about that. So as, as part of the conference, um, which is again starting tonight, the, the idea is, is similar to the discussions that were held on the 10 parables a few months ago. Um, we wanted to have similar discussions regarding the religions of the fathers. Um, looking at what we've already been given, what we already have, and trying to tease that out so that we can learn and prepare ourselves for uh, for what will be given or what can be given at the conference. And so over the course of the next five months, um, we've been working on trying to plan out different um, Zoom meetings and, and topics for discussion and presentations, uh, both regarding the religions of the fathers and and 
other uh, relevant topics uh, for the movement to discuss. I'll go ahead and share the calendar that we have uh, to this point. So if you can see the screen. Um, so this month in November, we have the religion of the fathers, what's going on right now. Uh, next week on the 13th, and again, these are all going to be at 7 p.m. Mountain Time, uh, this same link. And um, so if you go again, you can also go onto the website and just click on the link and it should bring you in. But so next week we'll be having, there will be a discussion on necessary skills, so skills necessary or things that will be needed to know and understand or to be able to do uh, in a Zion Tech community. Um, on the 15th, uh, we have the, the God's Hand Moving webinar series that's, that started uh, a couple of weeks ago, and that, that will be continuing. So that'll be another topic. And also on the 15th, there's going to be another set of Zoom meetings for the youth. Um, kind of like what we're doing with these Zoom meetings uh, for the adults and for these topic discussions, the youth will be also doing their own in a way that they can relate to each other and, and prepare and get to know each other um, prior to the conference. Um, and again, the information has been shared in a lot of different places. If you if you want to know more about it, hear more about the youth part of it, um, you can contact Missy. I think Missy Campbell is gonna be talking about that here in a little bit as well. Um, then we have the Adam's religion. That's gonna be a discussion led by McKay and, and a few others. And then a business process meeting at the end of the month that uh, Brian is going to lead. And again, so this is the way the calendar is. It's kind of laid out to where every Friday there's at least some type of Zoom meeting or Zoom discussion that we're going to have. Uh, right now, we still have quite a few dates, uh, days available for, for certain topics. So if anyone, there's anyone on here that feels impressed to uh, or led to speak about something or to talk on something, to hold a, a discussion on something, um, we would love to have you teach us and to talk about it and to and to, to help us work on that. So again, the, the main point is we've we've got for the most part the next uh, five months planned out with with Zoom meetings that, that we're hoping as time goes on more people can get on and we can again meet with each other and talk with each other about how do we prepare ourselves for receiving more and how do we understand and learn about what has already been shared. Thanks, Daryl. Um, uh, next, I think up is Misty. You want to go ahead and, and discuss the uh, youth activities or at least what, what we're hoping to do with the youth. Go ahead, Misty. Okay. Can you hear me? Okay. Um, so what we've discussed at our youth committee meetings is that we um, – are going to be doing a lot of planning after our first Zoom meeting. We're trying to get a lot of youth to come to the Zoom meeting as a, like we're going to discuss what they want to learn about, what they have questions about. We're kind of letting the youth guide us on what we, um, on our Zoom meetings, on the activities that we plan. Um, we're also kind of waiting for the location to plan some of these activities. Um, we also talked about maybe having some mini youth get-togethers in different areas, um, like maybe one in, in Las Vegas, one in Salt Lake, one in California. Um, and our main goal is to get the youth to connect and um, with each other, even if they live far apart, to have that connection, because that can help with the gospel, um, and to also teach the gospel to them in a way that they want to learn about it. So that's what we've discussed. Yeah, with the youth, we are, whoever shows up, we're, we're going to plan around them, kind of have it be organic, as Missy was saying. Uh, uh, I think oftentimes we try to over, can over program, and, and what we want to do is, is have, have them have some ownership with it. Uh, tell us what they'd like to do, uh, help it, we can work with them to facilitate it. So it's, it's more of a creative process. That's one of the things we're looking at is, is to, uh, 
engage with each other on various processes to figure out what works and what do doesn't. This is actually one grand experiment. <laughs> uh, and we're, we're hoping to learn along the way and, and see some things that uh, through this process that we, we learn about ourselves and learn about each other and, and, and maybe move a little bit closer to, to our savior in the process. So um, thanks, Missy. Uh, and then that leads us to, uh, as far as uh, kind of the camp activities, where there's various things we're, we got a lot of, a lot of things we're discussing. We, uh, again, this is kind of early in the process and, and it's an open process to everybody. We're, uh, we figured to be transparent, warts and all, let, let people see uh, what we go through and, and then, and the struggles we go through. We don't want to really hide anything. Uh, Oftentimes people just see a finished product and, and they don't get to see how you got there. And, and so this is what we're, we figured, let's let everybody see how it, it works along the way so we can uh, hopefully learn something. Um, Peter, you wanna go ahead with them? Yeah, so um, just to kind of go along with all of this, I think as we've discussed sort of the intent of the conference and how the conference is intended to be sort of a culmination of months of having these conference chats and discussing what it means to uncover the religion of the fathers and learning about what the Lord intends to reveal to us um, and some discussions about process and, and the process being important that we come together in a camp-like environment where we can get together and do a few things. And so one of the things that excites me about this is this is something that I have, I've had a lot of experience with. In my uh, career, I used to run camps for, geez, I wanna say 20 years. I've been involved with running camps and I've even put on um, uh, one retreat for, um, actually a couple of retreats for for the remnant, um, one for the eclipse at a scout camp uh, in eastern Idaho, and then um, uh, just sort of, uh, I think in 2016, we did a kind of a family retreat. We had, you know, a few families show up to that. And so one of the things that uh, I'm excited about is maybe, you know, doing this on a little bit of a larger scale. And so what I'm going to do just quickly is share the screen a little bit of the schedule that we've talked about. Um, with uh, the group for the past couple of weeks. And I'll just kind of walk through it a little bit. So the hope is that uh, when we do come together and we meet that we are kind of looking at our main activities and events happening around the weekend of the Passover. So if you look at the schedule here, I've got Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and Monday kind of, kind of lined out in bright white with um, some spaces for some, some, some activities, some seminars, some, some discussions, some open time and whatever we decide we wanna do. And I'll kind of go through some of the options that we've already discussed. We are hoping to solicit ideas from people if they really wanna do something to make sure that we you know, encourage people to have ideas from all over the spectrum. We've got young families, we've got empty nesters, um, we've got singles, we've got youth, and we need to be able to, you know, sort of manage some of the expectations from the different and variable groups. So um, the, really the only kind of big things that we have scheduled is, number one, we have the Passover meal that we hope to be able to have on Passover evening on, on Saturday. But that day, our plan is to spend some time probably in the morning doing um, a business section, and that would be maybe some of the discussions that come out of the process and some of the ideas that we kind of think through that maybe there's a culmination there where we can discuss and, and, uh, and you know, determine if there's any kind of business that needs to take place. And you know, we don't know what that's gonna look like, but we wanna block out some time for that. And then after the Passover meal, um, Denver has you know, already stated that he would like to speak um, after that Passover meal. So we've got that scheduled as well. And uh, in the morning on Sunday, we have some more time for him. If, 
he wants to do a Q&A. You know, he may or may not want to do that, but we wanted to make sure that maybe he had a break, he could sleep and then come back and and maybe uh, have more of a Q&A or a mingle with people about some questions or comments they may they might have had on, on that prior evening's discussion. So aside from that, <clears throat> we have, you know, some things that I've already got on there as far as possible activities. One of the big things I did want to point out that seems to have some traction is there's been quite a bit of discussion on having some sort of a Zions Fair or Preparedness Expo. There have been um, some initiatives by a couple of groups to do some teachings and discussions around some of the lost skills that we would need to recover. I know that Denver's spoken on this as well, you know, the need to be able to understand how to do, um, you know, communities with water and sewer and and raising, you know, crops and, and animal husbandry. So one thought was to be able to, you know, have maybe a, a Zion's Fair where people who have been learning about this stuff can set up booths and that people can um, rotate around and, and learn from each other. So that's one idea. Um, some of the other ideas we have are, are just, you know, wherever we're at, if there's some local kind of activities in the area that we just kind of advertise those for, for families and groups to kind of go and, and kind of self manage an activity. That's, that's, uh, that's really easy to do. We just kind of, you know, advertise it. Um, we have an option maybe to hike to a peak and, and uh, uh, maybe someone teach, um, teach the community about how to build an altar. Um, and, uh, you know, there's time for some open games, maybe some service projects. There's been talks about singing and dancing. So anytime that anybody has an, uh, an opportunity to share a possible activity, you know, just let me know and I can add it to the list. Um, to the left there, you know, there's obviously issues worth, of cost. One of the things that I like to, to uh, kind of contemplate are the ideas of the, that correlate to how sausage is being made when it comes to these kind of things. You know, my expertise is in how to feed people and how to take care of the other end and uh, make sure that everybody's having a good time. And because, you know, you can have all the best laid plans in the world, but if there's not a place for people to eat and drink and take care of their business after they eat and drink, uh, it can be a miserable experience. So I want to make sure that we take care of that um, and get a budget and try to figure out how to kind of make this work from a logistics standpoint. That's something that I have some expertise and I want to, want to uh, be involved in helping to make sure it takes place. Um, and then on the right hand side, there's just some food ideas we've talked about. Somebody brought up that maybe we have a fast during the event. Um, so, you know, there's, there's an idea there um, that can be difficult with children, but maybe, maybe adults can participate in something like that. Uh, and then issues around how we feed each other. Are we gonna bring our own food? Are we gonna um, have committees where people cook and clean? Are we gonna cater it, um, et cetera, et cetera. So we have to figure all that stuff out. So that's the schedule and a lot of it's gonna depend on our location and what comes of that, but this is what we're planning on doing. One of the final things just to kind of talk about here is, is that I do have an expanded schedule and I put it in gray. And the reason I've done that is because as we kind of solicit those who are interested in going, we want to kind of get a sense of the, uh, the tolerance for an extended camping event. Uh, there was a lot of initial interest in having something that goes for an entire week. Um, but if, you know, this goes out to the wind and we find out that there's only 20 people that want to, you know, stay for an entire week, it's probably not feasible for us to plan something that large and expansive. But you know, if we have 100 people or even 50 people, then maybe we can do something of that nature and then focus most of our efforts on sort of the days that surround the Passover weekend. So again, all super tentative at this point, we wanted to put that out there as we kind of go along so we can get feedback and figure out what the interest is. So that's it for, for the schedule. And um, I guess my part of it, and I don't know if there's any questions at this point, but um, I'm just kind of explaining sort of where we are going with respect to uh, the camp. Thanks, Peter. Yeah, it's it, right now it's challenging because with with COVID, with the current political uh, situations, 
uh, we just, it's hard to plan something this in, in advance without knowing the parameters. And, and that, like Lewis talked about, we, uh, we do have some locations we can use depending on what happens. And, and, and so one way or other, we're going to have a conference. <laughs> we're going to have a place people can come and, and, and be able to hopefully have an experience. Uh, the one other thing we're uh, going to discuss real briefly is just that business. Uh, some of the business was voting, you know, how, and again, another pertinent top topic, uh, how would uh, uh, people do this? Uh, how do we do this? You know, uh, if, it, if it's scripture, is that, uh, what do we do with scripture? Is it, uh, there's discussions out there, it has to be by revelation. And, and if so, how, does, how is that approved? Uh, and then we're, we're looking at what other topics would be uh, admissible or acceptable for business for the community. Um, we'll have a discussion in a couple of weeks on that. I will have uh, some pres a presentation just going over some of the background in, in scripture, uh, the options that we're looking at. And then we'll uh, hopefully, what we're hoping for is to get feedback from the body of, of, the, of the, co the covenant members so that they can uh, let us know what they're thinking. And it's not just us deciding, but it's hopefully uh, part of a greater decision by all of us. Uh, I think that's it for tonight. As far as uh, the, the things we had prepared, we just wanted to give you uh, an idea. Is there any questions that came in or, or anything that we need to, to answer right now? No, let me check. Lisa, do you know if there's any questions? None in the chat. No. Okay. Does Does well, anyone on here have any questions for for Brian or for anyone? Well, that's good. We just wanted to keep it short and sweet anyway for this uh, little bit, so that people can review it when they want to, and and let them know what's going on with what our plans are. Yeah. So it is an open process. We're just uh, letting things kind of develop over the next few months. Uh, the, the Zoom discussions is what I'm really excited about right now. That uh, the intent there again is just to to raise uh, to stimulate everybody to go ahead and study the scriptures themselves, and and then to have the various skills from the the, the body of Christ. People can share, uh, you know, topics related to religion of the fathers, and and we're not necessarily going to screen out any covenant matter. Remember, we figure uh, part of this is allowing people to share what they need to share and if, and let people hopefully exercise their own discernment and, and understanding. Um, we want we want to we want freedom, you know. Brian, <laughs> I got a question for you. OK, was this intended to be just for covenant uh, members? Uh, it's open to everybody, but we're uh, we were discussing that. Um, Obviously, there's kind of an extended, uh, we've had some discussion, there's an extended, there's covenant members, and then there's a lot of people that self-identify as remnant folk, and, and we want to be welcoming to everybody. And, and so how we're going to, if there's other presentations people want to do, we're hoping to maybe get like some, um, if there's a rabbi that wants to, or we have, uh, there's a Hopi Baptist preacher that wanted to maybe do something I haven't shared with everybody that he may be presenting. And um, so we're just kind of want to present, a, uh, allow for some other presentations just to kind of broaden our mind, kind of like the Japan conference, how uh, Chris Van Campen was able to have all these different presentations from Buddhists and the Shinto priest that, that did relate to the subject of, uh, that was being presented. Does that answer your question? Okay. Any other questions or? Okay, you, you guys are welcome to, you know, uh, just for the recording sake, you're welcome to contact us. Uh, we still have, I think, have our uh, ability to be contacted and we'll respond to whatever questions we need. And, and again, if, there, if there's presentations that you would like to do, uh, you're welcome. We will uh, find a spot for you and uh, advertise it as best we can. I'll go ahead and uh, Lisa, if you want to take us away now. Yeah, I just want to tell everyone, thank you so much for joining us. And remember to let everyone know that we want to gather here on Friday nights. We have a schedule. I posted the link to the website, which has the, <clears throat> the schedule for all the meetings. 
we'd really love for everybody to join and you know enjoy this together and to actually participate and and study and uh, everybody should be engaged in this process so that we can all collectively reach up as is down. Uh, it's like a chiasmus. Um, Peter's going to give the closing prayer. Thank you guys so much for, for joining.